All right. Um, okay, I can't see any of you folks, so bear with. Um, so bear with me. Um, do use your uh, um, the microphone. There's not enough. There's not too many of us, so please yeah. feel free to speak in on your microphone um, if you have questions. And um, I'm out of practice doing these presentations, so bear with me. <laughs> um, as Donna said, my name is Kelly Hamilton. I am a 4-H volunteer. I do take photos at the Bangor State Fair for the market um, uh, shows, uh, for the lambs and the steers, for the buyers to send off, um, for the kids to send off to their buyers. And I've been doing that for about 25 years. Um, I started back when we used a Polaroid camera and I could take two pictures and the one where the kid didn't have its eyes closed and the animal wasn't pooping was the one we used. And hopefully they weren't doing one of each. Um, so um, things have definitely changed. I am sure most of you definitely probably have cameras that you have access to um, on your phones at the very least, or if you don't have um, other cameras. Um, tonight, I'm not going to talk about camera settings or anything because I simply don't know what you're going to need. Um, it all varies all the time. Mostly what I'm going to do um, is about what you need to do for setting up your animal and getting the best lighting um, and getting the best so you can get the best picture. Um, now, my understanding is from Donna is this is maybe for feeder calves. Um, so I know those are usually an animals that aren't necessarily handled a lot. So maybe um, this is going to be a little more of a challenge, but um, if you're doing animals that you handle on a fair basis, it will get, it will be a little bit easier, I'm assuming. Luckily, I haven't handled a lot of beef animals in a long time. Um, I stopped 4-H animal showing of more years than I'm going to admit right now, um, but I have shown um, beef cattle, market lambs, dairy, um, and um, I did show some sheep for my brother also. So I've, I've shown a little bit of everything and I've certainly participated at Bangor State Fair and um, I've attended Freiburg Fair for a lot of years too and enjoyed the shows over there. So I do have familiar, familiarity with actually handling the animals. Um, I'm gonna thank Donna right now for her help <laughs> with the technical stuff um, because um, as, as much as she uh, tripped over things here at the beginning, she got us going. I wouldn't even be here at this point. Um, <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and get started on the basics. Um, some Zoom rules, in this case, for such a small group, you don't have to worry about muting your microphones. Um, please use chat or speak right in, um, or you can use the raise your hand feature if you do have questions. Um, and um, mm -hmm. if we were a larger group, I'd say go ahead and keep your camera off for bandwidth issues. But um, if you want to, um, if you don't have bandwidth issues, go ahead and keep your camera read on. I can't see you anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did originally do this presentation for 4-Hers. Um, in that presentation, I was talking about a variety of different animals. Um, so some of the slides you're going to see are not strictly beef animals. Um, um, but basically, it will show you what we're, it's going to give you examples of what I'm talking about as I go along. Um, a lot of the time, I'm going to talk about the animals as if they're on halter, but it doesn't matter if they're on halter or not. Everything still applies because you're not worried about having a person in there. So I will talk about that just a little bit. Um, today, mostly it's positioning and lighting, getting your best opportunities with your animals. Um, and um, you are going to get an email that is going to um, go over the quick points that you're going to see on the slides today. And you'll also, um, it also has um, website links that are, um, that I use to per put this together. Um, I really recommend looking at the first one. It's um, a guy in Australia. In eight and a half minutes, he did a heck of a, a heck of a job actually doing the pictures and showing you how to do the pictures. And I got a lot of good information from him. You're probably going to hear me say pretty much everything he said um, because it was really good information. I really highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, basically, we are going to talk about doing this as individual animals. Um, I know with um, again, I'm sort of focused on feeder calves. And correct me if I'm wrong. If this is for more than just feeder calves, but um, this is about individual animals, not groups. And I know in feeder calves, sometimes you're taking a picture of a whole group, but again, all the same principles are going to apply for the lighting, the positioning, and getting your best chance at your best shot. Um, so I will let you know, I've never specifically taken pictures for online posting, and I'm not sure about the image size, but whoever's gonna put together your website is the person who's going to give you that information. Um, so um, 
we should be on slide three. I just realized we didn't move slides. I'm sorry. Um, so um, on my um, uh, monitor right now, this is a little bit grainy, but this is what we're aiming for, for a picture. We're looking at an um, animal here that is set up really well. You can see all the feet, the head's up, the ears are forward. He's clean, she's clean, excuse me. <laughs> um, so uh, this is sort of the ideal type picture you're going for. Um, I don't expect anybody to get this on an early try. Um, you're going to have to practice. I probably could not get this picture, to be honest. Um, but this is what the ultimate goal is, essentially. Um, today, we're going to cover some very basics of lighting and background. Um, then we'll talk about positioning your animal, um, what to do before the uh, picture, where the photographer be should be standing and what you can and cannot do in editing your pictures um, to make one a good picture and also to make an honest picture. Um, <laughs> so, alrighty. Um, for the next picture, um, uh, your picture, sh a good picture should be clear. It shouldn't be fuzzy or out of focus. It should be well lit, not too dark or too bright. Um, it should show all the parts of the animal. It, that you need to feature. It should be close enough for you to see details of the animal um, and the subject of the photo photograph. I'm having trouble with the word <laughs> but photograph today. Um, the subject should be the focus um, and you shouldn't have too much distraction in the photo. I put this one up because this is an ultimately what you do not want. Um, which animal are we focusing on here? There's a lot of distraction. There's not a lot of focus on the animal, he or she, um, which one are you picking out? And it's actually out of focus too. And it really is out of focus. It's not your, it's not the, uh, it's not the, your screen. It really is out of focus. So hopefully by the end of the day or the end of the night, you will have some ideas on what to do so this doesn't happen. Um, Number six is uh, an example of what you don't want also for individual animals. Um, the one on the left, he's facing the wrong direction. He's in a mud pile. Um, he's not particularly dirty, but I suspect when he picks those feet up, they're going to be a little muddy. Um, the one on the right, he's uh, a little dirty on the hind end. He's standing in a really weird position. So these are what we're also trying to avoid for pictures. So these are your examples of what not to do. Um, <laughs> you said one is pointed the right way and one is pointed well, the wrong way? They're is not there a convention? Like the, well, by the wrong way is that I'm looking at the, um, on both of them, we're looking at the back end of the animal. Now this is the money end, admittedly, and we actually do angle our animals a little bit ideally, but um, this is, they shouldn't be looking back over their shoulder. They can look at you a little bit, but looking back over their shoulders just, that means they're in the wrong position. Um, so lighting um, is really important. Um, photography is painting with light is what they say. Um, so getting the best light is, um, what we're striving for. Um, a sunny day is going to be your best bet, um, but you don't want the sun directly overhead. That'll cast shadows in all the wrong places, likely underneath them, um, where you don't want that to be underneath. You do want to have the sun coming over your shoulder um, is, I, is the best light, um, like this evening. Um, I was driving along and I'm going, oh gosh, the light is really nice. I wish I had time to stop. Um, <laughs> If the light is too bright, it can make your animal look completely washed out and very flat. You'll lose the dimension of your animal in the picture. And of course, if it's too dark, you can't see the animal to begin with. Um, bright light can also cause glare on the lens of your camera, which can cause flares or spots in the wrong place. And um, getting those out but through editing just would take far too long. Um, the way to avoid this is to take your pictures, of course, in the best lighting possible. And the absolute best time to get a picture is in the early to mid morning or in the mid to late afternoon um, or maybe early evening, though it's a little harder um, in the early evening now in the fall because the sun, the light is coming in so low at this point. Um, and when I'm saying that, I'm not talking about six o'clock, five o'clock. I'm talking about where the sun is in the sky when I talk about afternoon and evening and morning. 
at these times, the sun's are, sun is generally not too bright um, and the rays are coming in at a nice angle. They're a little softer, they're not as harsh. Um, and these are gonna cast some shadows, but they're not going to be severe. Um, and it's easiest to, the easiest time of day to get the light coming in over your shoulder, which is like I said, ideal um, to get the shadows right and not to get too much brightness going on. Um, as I said, I usually photograph people um, in the pictures with my animals. So I have a little bit of a different consideration, but you're not having to worry about that. So this having it come right over your shoulder is perfect. Um, another little timing tip is to take the pictures of white or light colored animals in the early morning or the later afternoon. Dark animals are gonna look a little bit better in the later morning or the um, earlier to mid afternoon because the light's gonna hit them um, and reflect back a little bit better. Um, it's, um, it's just gonna make the animals stand out and pop a little bit better in your pictures. Uh, the sun shouldn't be behind the subject um, because your animal will be all dark. Um, this picture shows what happens when the sun is behind the subject. Um, having the sun off to one side or behind the photographer is best, but make sure the photographer's shadow isn't in the picture either. Um, this is going to light up your animal. It's going to prevent you from having shadows where you don't want and also give your animal a little bit more of an appearance of depth and it will show your animal off to its best advantage. Obviously here in this picture, um, um, honestly, it looked a little bit darker on my screen <laughs> even, but <laughs> um, you just, um, you can't see them as well. You can't see the eyes except for the fact that you've got the reflection in the one on the back from the flash that the person I'm assuming is using. Um, but they just, they just are dull um, as overall. Um, if you can't take it, pictures at the time I've outlined and you need to take the picture during a brighter time of day, you can try finding an area um, that has a little bit of shade like near a tree or a barn um, or a building. Um, or you can do it on a day when there's a little bit of an overcast. You don't want it really super dark like it was today with the rain, um, but something that just diffuses the light a little bit will help um, keep the shadows from being too harsh. Um, and um, it'll just make the picture glow is the best word I can come up with versus being all angles and sharp edges essentially. Um, definitely um, still do make sure that the side, the sun is on one side or the other of you, not behind your subject, all of that still applies. Also try not to take pictures inside. Um, if you're desperate, you can try, but it's gonna be really super hard. Um, to do it um, without proper backdrops, without proper flashes. Um, you know, those you'll see the in the big professional places, of course, they've got those big flash um, diffusers that you can see that pop off. The little flash on your um, on your camera is just going to end up making a harsh shadow behind the animal um, and make them very, very bright, very well illuminated, and no definition to them at all if you use that. So um, unless you're absolutely desperate, do do this all outside and take advantage of the sun. Um, you want uh, the background to be very uniform, very plain, or very least not distracting in any way. Um, against the wall of a barn is absolutely great, especially if it's a really uniform color. Um, do make sure to make sure that you have everything in the area cleaned out in a much larger area than you think you are going to need to do the, the picture because inevitably they're not gonna stand where you want them to and you're gonna to have to move them along and you're gonna to have to take a wider swath. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if um, Make sure um, if you don't have a plain background, at least have a pleasant background. Doing this in a field or um, along a fence line um, or with trees hanging out in the background, um, that makes it at least a pleasant picture, even if it's not a completely uniform in the back picture, but do make sure there's not farm equipment or bright red truck or a tree that's going to look like it's coming out of the head of your animal. I've made that mistake more than once. Um, <laughs> so um, try just look around before you even, um, before we even get started. Um, and really scope out where you think you're going to get your best pictures and actually take some pictures um, so that you um, 
you and then look at them and say oh i didn't even notice that because that'll what happened you'll see the perfect spot but you'll miss the bright red whatever sitting over there in the corner so take some pictures look at them closely have somebody else look at them and um, just make sure it's all clear and nice in there when you go to do it yeah can do some editing and remove bright red things and stuff like that um i certainly have done that too um but it depends on how much turnaround time you have and how comfortable you feel with editing um again dark animals are going to look better on a lighter background light animals are going to look better on a darker background um and also don't forget that the ground should be neat in front of their feet so grass straw sawdust are really great um, on tar if you have to. Um, if you're going to do it on dirt, just make sure that there's not a lot of rocks or anything and, you know, make sure it's clean, you know, no surprise patties or anything out there too. Um, go ahead and take those out. So this is a picture um, that I use to explain distraction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this would be a really good picture with the kid and his pig, except there's a house and a PlayStation behind him. So you're completely missing the kid and the pig. Um, so this is definitely an example of what not to do with your distractions and checking out your background. Um, like I said, start looking around now, start taking your test photos, seeing where you think this is going to work really well for you. Um, so uh, the next set is, these are um, a slide, this is exactly the same girl on the same day with the same lamp, <laughs> um, but they were taken in different spots at different times of day and under different lighting circumstances. Um, the one on the left I took in the morning, um, I, it, these were both in August at the Bangor State Fair, and the one on the left I took it in the morning, the one on the right I took it later in the afternoon after she had done very well in her class. Um, so. I like the one on the left because it's a fairly uniform background. Um, it is all natural lighting. Um, the light in this case is actually coming from um, her right side and slightly behind the trees because of the time of morning. But um, still you can see the animal really well stands out and everything. Um, it's tight in on them. And of course, this is one I'm featuring the kids. So it's not super tight on the lamb, but it is, you're just, they're featured in the photo. There's nothing else you can't, there is a barn back there and you, but you can't tell there's a barn back there and there's vehicles behind that tree, but you can't tell because I cropped it in tight enough for that. Um, the color of course on the left is a lot truer. That is a white lamb. On the right, that is a yellow lamb. <laughs> So um, this is also an argument of why you do not take pictures inside. This is actually under a yellow and white striped tent. As I said, it's in the afternoon. Um, this has actually been slightly light adjusted. Um, it was even more yellow when I started. <laughs> um, so um, it's just, um, it's, a, it's, it's really not a good place to take pictures. I, I strive every year to get better at it. Um, but this is why I like outside natural lighting, you're going to get a much better product at the end of that. Um, oh yes, this is <laughs> funny. Um, so before the picture, if possible, fit your animal. Um, at the very least, I know these guys aren't going into show, but at the very least, they need to be neat and clean. You don't want um, big mud splatters and dung balls and all of that hanging off of them. Um, Buffed and puffed is even better um, if you've got if you've got the time if you've got the in, um, the inclination you know the better they look the the you know the, the better your chances of getting a better price on them. Um, essentially, this is competition day. Even though you're not standing in there getting first place, second place, third place, you're competing with everybody else who's trying to sell these folks a calf. Um, so you want this to be the best presentation you can possibly come up with. Also, if nothing else, a cleaner and um, well-kempt calf is going to look like a healthier calf. Uh, ultimately, it's going to present itself as uh, going into their herd as a better animal overall. Um, with that in mind, if there's a chance that there's going to be a human in the photo, they should be in clean clothes, neat hair, no hats, no logos except for your farm, um, and correct foot footwear. Um, don't skimp on this just because this isn't an actual competition. Um, your audience is going to see the work that you're putting into your animals. They're going to realize that you're putting in effort, um, that you're putting in care to your animals, which is going to mean that they're getting a better product on the other end. Um, and they will notice these things that you're, you're putting in your effort. Um, the next slide is definitely an example of what not to wear. Um, <laughs> 
So <laughs> um, just, just, this is not what we want to see. Um, like I said, appropriate farm clothes, neat, clean um, is what we're looking for. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into positioning the animal um, now. Um, these are the photos are all about the animal, of course, and they are going to be close up to the animal and the animal should be in essentially what we call a show position um, to make it all its best features stand out and hopefully hide any of its major flaws. Um, the, front the front feet should be square and placed at the corners of the body. The hind leg closest to the photographer should be um, back slightly. Uh, and the hind legs should be set apart um, from left to right widely also. Um, and all four feet should uh, ideally be visible in the photo. That's a little bit harder to do. Um, you will definitely get all three feet in there. Um, if you can get the fourth in from the, with a good angle, um, that is ideal to do. Um, this is going to show off the muscling and the dimension of your animal. Um, it just shows and it also makes them look a little bit longer with that leg pulled back slightly. The head should be up, the ears uh, should be pointing forward. Um, if you happen to have one of those floppy ear, ear breeds like the Brahmins, um, you can still make sure everything is, else is pointing forward. <laughs> um, if you're doing this without a halter, the animal might turn its head slightly towards the photographer. That's okay, you just don't want them looking all the way at the photographer um, or giving them the side eye, as I call it, where they're looking at it going like, what are you doing over there? Um, you still want everything to look natural and like they're calm and relaxed as much as we possibly can. Um, the shoulders of the animal should still be turned slightly away from the photographer. Um, this will make your animal look a little bit longer um, and a little bit smoother in its transitions. Uh, the front end should be going uphill just a bit, ideally, or at the very least, um, even with the back legs, you don't want them headed downhill. Um, that'll just show all the flaws and make them look bumpy in all the wrong way. Um, uh, you um, it, don't try to fix the animal going uphill in editing. You will see why in a little bit. Um, having someone out of frame holding something tasty, talking to the animal, making sounds, clicking, um, waving their hands just a little bit to get the animal's attention will help get their heads full up and their ears forward, um, and which is what we're going for. So you're definitely going to want somebody on the front end helping. You may need somebody on the back end pushing or separating or keeping their head on a, uh, on a swivel if you're going to be trying to do more than one animal at a time to keep you know, somebody else from wandering into the picture. Um, so those are the, that's what we're going for in positioning your animal. Um, this here is an example of what you don't want to do. Um, for beef animals, um, their hind leg towards the photographer should be back just a bit. This animal is way too far apart on the back end. Um, the animal is also headed downhill and its head is turned completely away from the photographer. Um, most of these, um, so all of these things are not showing this animal off to its best advantage. Um, most of these photos that I have found and seen have the animal facing to the right hand side. Um, I think it's because um, in the show ring, that's the show side, the judge is usually walking on that side, though they do circle, of course. Um, but I think that's considered the show side. So usually they're pointed to the right. If you don't have somebody on the end of a halter, I don't think it matters so much, just as long as they're in the correct position, which way they're facing. Does anybody have any questions? Because I'm given a lot of information. <laughs> I just want to be sure I'm not going too fast or I'm not leaving anybody behind. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, all animals, as I should, their neck should be fully extended, but not too stretched. Um, in this case, the steer's neck is pulled way out. Its head is way high um, and its ears are not flipped forward. All of this makes um, the animal look awkward and not natural. And again, you're going for a natural look with your animals, I'm assuming. Um, so um, this is uh, just a little bit too stretched. The front, the legs are pretty good actually. Um, and the background is great. This is um, a really nice background if you're, if you've got a barn, um, like I said, that's plain and uniform in siding and they've got nice green grass in front. So that's a good thing in here. Um, so the photographer should be, um, positioned lower than the subject. Um, they should get down on a knee or possibly sit down on a chair if they have to. Um, do a lot of squatting doing this. Um, you're, if we are doing 
feeder calves especially, it's really important to be lower than them. If you're standing over or taller than your animal, you're going to um, overpower them and you're going to basically um, make them look weaker and dwarfed if you're not doing it on level with them. So you want to be um, focused basically just behind the shoulder is where your center point should be with your picture. That's gonna get your back feet and maybe both of your front feet if they're positioned absolutely perfectly. Um, and it's also going to get make them look very balanced um, across the entire photo. Um, you, like I said, you're gonna do a lot of squatting, so I have, hope you have good knees. I don't. Um, slide number 18. Um, this is just about a perfect picture right here. Um, the photographer's on the same level as the animal. Um, they're focusing just behind the shoulder. This animal is clean. He's fluffed. He's buffed. Um, he's, there's, it's a non-distracting background. Um, he um, is, his ears are forward. He's facing forward. Um, you can see all four feet on him, or her, excuse me, that is female. I do know my difference, honest. Um, <laughs> So um, this is this is really a good great example of what you're looking for in your ultimate picture. If you were to get this, fantabulous. Um, so um, this picture here that we've got coming up is an example of why you don't take the picture from the front of the animal. Um, by taking it from the front, you've made the animal look like it's running downhill. Its legs are set narrowly, but it makes it look even more narrow makes him look very short bodied. Um, this is just, it's putting the animal at a disadvantage um, when you're looking at it. Um, so this is why we avoid taking them from the front end. If anything, go slightly to the back end. Um, again, that's where the money is, as we all know. So, um, but this is definitely an example of why you don't do the front end picture. And the distraction in the background. And there, oh yes, there is the bright red guy behind it too. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, for editing, you're going to keep it really minimal. Um, you can't alter your animal. You can't straighten the top line. You can't widen the rump. You can't decrease that dewlap. You can lighten or darken the photo slightly um, if things didn't work out in the lightning, lighting. Um, if there is enough tint, you can also slightly um, adjust the white balance. Um, but as I showed you earlier, it's hard to do that. That picture I showed you of the lambs, she still looked pretty darn yellow and you saw the lamb that is a white lamb and I had adjusted that, but if I'd adjusted it anymore, um, I would have actually lost the animal. Everything would have gone very white. So it's best, like I said, to start out with good lighting to begin with. Um, cropping will be dictated by what rules um, you're given about what size to submit for your pictures. Um, when I print pictures for the buyer cards, I'm printing a four by six um, a ratio. Um, and again, it's going to be dictated by what they do, but you do want to get your cropping in as closely to your animal as you possibly can, by stay with, but staying within the parameters. Um, so you'll have to go by that stuff. Um, also, um, you can't cover up your flaws. You can't go in there with your little pen or your little circle or your little... Um, and, Yes, Raymond, hello. I have a bit, um, Donna's dog is here with us too. <laughs> um, you can't, um, you can't uh, do any of that editing. That would be, that would be dishonest, but, um, but you can, um, like I said, adjust things to make things look a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter too. Um, so this is why I said don't do your adjusting for your straightening um, in the pictures. The one on the left is super obvious that they took the whole thing and they went, Poof. Um, <laughs> it just, it just um, goes, hmm. Um, the other one, they did it too, but it, it is a little bit less obvious that they did do that in that picture. Um, but when I saw it, I was like, hmm, what's wrong with that picture? Oh, I'm looking for that kind of picture. So I grabbed it offline. Um, and um, I will say, I should thank all the people that I took these pictures from. I have no idea who they are because I just put it into Google search. Um, so I, I anonymously thank all these people for their pictures that I borrowed. Um, but the one on the right, obviously, um, is just, it's just changed a little bit. It's not a terrible picture. Um, this is honestly sort of what I think you're likely going to often achieve at home. Um, if you can do this off, off, off halter, you know, it's not perfectly lit. He's not perfectly set, but it's a, it's a good picture. Um, he, it will show your animal to a pretty darn good advantage, I think. Um, it's, 
Um, this is a lot of work to do well the first time. Like I said, some of these really super good pictures, I'm going, I don't know if I could do that um, without taking 50 million pictures to get to the one snap. I'm getting better, um, but um, it's gonna take a lot of work. Um, this is not an easy thing to do. Um, again, this is like an ideal looking picture that you're headed for here. He's fluffed, he's clean, he's in the right position. You can see everything, his ears are, um, his ears are formed. This is your ideal. Don't be disappointed if you don't get your ideal. Again, take advantage of the fact that you have a digital camera. Um, you're going to be able to take a lot of pictures um, and then sort through and grab the best one out of it. Um, it um, it's hard, <laughs> but um, probably most of you, um, if you've been raising cattle at all for any amount of time, you probably have taken more than a few pictures of your cattle. Um, you're just trying to get into a really sort of set box with these type of pictures um, of what you're trying to achieve your goal for. Um, so um, I hope that this will help you all. I hope you um, get something out of this and I haven't bored the heck out of you. Um, <laughs> And please, if you do have any questions, um, I'm more than willing to try to answer them. But as I said, I'm not an expert. I do this just as um, I'm an amateur. Uh, my full-time job is a veterinary clinic. So this is not something I do all the time, but I, um, I hope you've gotten some things out of this and I can try to answer any questions you might have if you have any. It would seem that all of this applies to video pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, I guess the videoing animals on the move mm -hmm. uh, can be, you know, you know, you're still after the same Yes, goal. and I actually, uh, the links that we're going to send you, um, at least one of those is to how to video your animal is specific to that. But I think it, it, it would seem that having the camera in a fixed position and moving the cattle versus the photographer walking through the animals, trying to do it that way. I think that's, that might be the, you know, the, it, from what I've seen of the so-called professional looking videos, mm -hmm. they all seem to be, have the camera, you know, pretty much in a, uh, fixed position and they're moving the cattle past the the camera yep. versus having the, the person walk. Yeah and part of that I'm sure is because they're trying to get the movement of the animals part of the uh, the information they're trying to display is get the movement out there to show that they how they walk if you know um, and their there's ease of movement and everything you know I'm sure that's part of that but um, I'm pretty I, I say that that um, we had the the digital showground um, um, focuses on beef. Um, I think that's the virtual cattle battle is the one that has the videos about um, moving your about your animal moving around. I'm pretty sure that's the one that um, will uh, show you how to take videos and definitely how do you photograph your livestock with Jordan Daigle. He covered some of that also. Uh, actually, I wasn't showing the they didn't see the screen. Okay. Well, um, she's going to send that to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I'm showing you the screen now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, <laughs> I was going to try to open up the internet. Do you think we can? I don't know. Can we? Yeah. Um, like I said, I was putting this together for kids and I didn't know what kind of competitions they were going to be participating in. So I left all my links and everything in for that. And I also put in some stuff about in theirs. I did a little bit more on moving the animals around. Um, but you are correct. Um, it's, it's, you should be staying in position. You want to sh them to be able to um, see the movement of the animal, how smoothly they move and everything. Um, and he did say, um, maybe this isn't the one, um, one of, maybe it's the North Carolina virtual show. One of them um, did have specifics on what you're doing if you're doing a video um, for competition. 
but honestly, I did this back in June and I haven't looked at the link since, so I don't quite remember what all went with what. <laughs> this was pretty interesting. It also shows if you want, if you do need to take multiple um, angles, stills, how to take them over the back. Um, that would be Jordan's video on YouTube. Um, he showed how to take, and he's using goats, so forgive him, um, but he's, he shows you how to take um, the pictures from over the back and to show the length and the width of the animals too. All right, you'll have to go, you have to go dig into them a little bit. They're not right on the top with it. I do remember that much. But, all right, were there any other questions or can I try to answer anything else? <laughs> No questions from folks. You can unmute yourself if you have a question. Well, if not, we'll thank Kelly for, uh, I think it was a very interesting session. Uh, oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. Because I was having a hard time getting on, I totally missed the whole thing about the back end. So, if you could just kind of like recap that real quickly. Um, can you refresh me on exactly where you meant by the back end? Well, you talked about the back end, taking photos the back end or something. That's that's what I kind of missed. So, because I was having a hard time getting on. Getting this, on. I'm, I'm wondering if we were way back when I was showing you the slides of what not to do, which was taking the pictures from the more from the back end. That was slide three or four, oh, I think. Okay. Good mm -hmm. Yeah, was it two cat? Was it two animals um, right beside each other? Um, two different pictures. It it might have been uh, as uh, like I said, I was having a hard time. I could see you, okay. and then it was here, and and then I caught something about back end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So this was um, not taking it from the back end angle. Um, in these cases, um, the animal on the left. You don't want them looking over their shoulders and looking at you. Um, while, like I said, this is the money shot because honestly, we're selling beef here. Um, but um, you um, want to show a well-balanced animal that overall um, is going to look good. So you, um, in the case of the guy on the left, you're, you're looking at his butt um, and he's looking at you over his shoulder. And the one on the left, again, He's standing awkwardly. He doesn't look like he's standing naturally. We want to get them standing naturally, but centered and posed. And these are just examples of it's not quite right. Um, that and the fact that they're dirty. Um, so these are, they're not quite right. They're um, in their pictures. This is what we're sort of trying to avoid. Does that, yes. does that sound like where we were? Yeah, I think so. I think that's about where I came in. Okay. And the next one I went into lighting and how to get the best light and everything. Yeah, saw okay. that. All right. Yeah, and that's basically the only thing um, that we did before that is keeping it from being cluttered. If you want to show her the previous, uh, the previous slide number five. Um, yeah, of a, yeah. Sorry, I'm not running the, <laughs> the slides. So this is an example again of not what to do um, because you can't tell which animal you're talking about and it's not in focus and everything. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, again, thank you, Kelly. And uh, we did record this, so uh, I'll hopefully have the recording available when I send out your your uh, uh, little uh, sheet of information. And uh, uh, maybe the the uh, Maine Beef Beef Producers Association would put it up on their website too. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, so I'm stopping the recording.